Hello and welcome everyone. Good morning to you. Congratulations on waking up early enough to make it in time. For me it was fun because uh, commuting in London is always uh, an adventure, which I have a bit missed, but not that much. Anyway, welcome to my talk uh, called uh, Over Two Years with Java 11 in Production, or how I should call it since recently upgrading to Java 17, crazy or crazy not to. Uh, my name is Andrzej Grzesik. Uh, you can call me Axe because spelling that is non-trivial, and I'm very well aware of that. I work at Revolut. I've been there for two years. Uh, so far, it's been fun. So if you want to work with me, of course, come over. If you want the slides, uh, email me, and I'll happily send them to you. That's uh, very easy to do. And uh, of course, the opinions I, I represent are my own, especially the mistakes. Everything incorrect here is entirely my fault. Blame it on me. All the good things are, well, thanks to the conference organizers. A uh, couple of facts about me. Uh, I'm a Java champion, proud to have been a Java 1 rockstar, which means I managed to visit the conference when it was still going. Used to be involved, uh, or am still kind of involved in, with Polish Java user group. Even though I live in London, I run used to. Right now it's difficult. A uh, conference called GeekCon. We hope it will come back next year and some other community things. If you have questions about the talk, ask them. Uh, you can try to wave and then somebody will tell you to type them into the app or you can uh, figure it out with uh, somebody lo lo here. But I will be checking the questions on the app so that we give everybody a fair chance and the very same playground. If you have any questions about working at Revolut or Revolut in general, Let's cover them after the talk outside of the room. So conference, uh, well, talk-related uh, questions I'll be very happily taking on. Uh, Revolut-related questions after outside. Obviously, Revolut is hiring. And yeah, let's start with a dry picture so that I can drink. Having said what I said, there are two, uh, if you're still slightly asleep or as much asleep as you can, uh, if you want a TLDR, because we live in internet times. Uh, the journey as of today, it might be the, the best journey is try to do 17. If it doesn't work, go 16 and in between. Uh, soon you will be able to upgrade to 17 directly. Uh, why? I'll cover some of those uh, things in there. And now we would have a show of hands, but recently I just learned that there is a company that still offers support for Java 6. So yes, there is plenty of Java 6 uh, out there. So there are people out there. I wish they will be able to migrate, but what can you do? A lot of us, a lot of people in the room still will be on Java 8. You can try to wave your hands. That's always interactive. Uh, I wave at you back. And people on, on the internet, I wave at you as well. Hi, good to see you. If you're on Java 8, hopefully you can pr plan the upgrade and your organization will support it, or you can plan to switch organizations. But that's entirely up to you. Uh, if you're on Java 9 or Java 10, there is a small caveat there. Uh, they are not being developed or maintained unless you do it yourselves, which means probably want to migrate out of those faster than out of Java 8. Uh, very good candidate to, uh, for migration is Java 11, which we are using because this is the de facto standard. and. Uh, for migrations happening right now. And if every, anybody is on something more modern than Java 11, first of all, congratulations and high five. It's, I hope you're also enjoying the journey. Uh, but why am I talking about Java versions if uh, I already included the Java version in the internet, uh, sorry, in the title? Because there are data sources, and different data sources and different surveys and different ways of acquiring data will give you different information bubbles. So some Twitter surveys uh, suggested that Java 8 uh, was pre the predominant or an older version than Java 11 or Java 9 Plus was the predominant version in December 2020. So according to what Josh Long did in December 2020, that should be accurate. Josh has a huge follower, number of followers. And then uh, in March 2020, so way, way before that, uh, there was a re report published by Ben Evans and uh, based on what New Relic data uh, about which versions of Java are used. Uh, you don't have to look at the numbers. I will tell you what uh, the result is. Uh, majority of people in there were Java 8. From what I know uh, after talking to, well, my uh, friends and large organizations, most of people still are uh, on Java 8. Some are migrating or executing the migration, but m a lot of workloads still haven't. What it means to you, what it means to everybody, as in there is going to be a, a migration journey for the f next few years as well, and it's going to continue, and it's going to be migrating from, well, hopefully for some to Java 8 and then to, to Java 11, uh, and this subject isn't going to die that quickly. Uh, everybody would like it to, but no. Nah. Now, this presentation is about a, a Java upgrade that went well, uh, but it's in a context. It's in the context of Revolut, what we did to our software, how we upgraded our services. Uh, it is very much possible that if you attempt to do the very same thing, your mileage and your experience will vary. That's normal. Uh, I am going to tell you what I found uh, 
out that might be useful to people that still have the migration ahead of them. Uh, and yeah, when we were migrating a few years ago, well, it's sooner going, well, it's closer to three years than two years, actually, right, as of now. Uh, we were using something called CoreOS, and so all of our applications were running Sonic Docker using Spark Java, Juke, uh, and there were some, of course, other Docker, Docker containers running on the, on the VM, but one application per VM, obviously, CoreOS is now, it's not resting, it's dead. Uh, and we decided to upgrade, and why would we even uh, decide to upgrade? Well. There is one. The, our, one of our mottos, main motivations, well, the corporate spirit, uh, somebody tried to capture us, get, get it done. Yes, we like to move things, and uh, uh, we like to move things and keep things working. Because uh, in a, any financial organization, well, has to have, a, has to have the uptime, otherwise people will not uh, believe they, they, know, they know what they're doing. Obviously, we cannot go down, and we try not to go down, and I think we're doing pretty well. But with a Java upgrade, uh, we need to upgrade because we need the security fixes. It's an obvious thing. Uh, we do not want to expose anything that is uh, behind that can be actively exploited. And if you go through the list of uh, security findings and security fixes that have gone into JDK releases, you'll discover quite a litany. And it's a good thing because the software is actively maintained. People, uh, people use it. People. If people use it, then people will try to attack it, and then pe people make it safer and safer. But in order to get s security fixes into the JVM, we need to upgrade the JVM. So that work is not going away. Uh, also, uh, we would have to upgrade to Java 11 on one, on one occasion anyway, because uh, that will hopefully be inevitable for most of, uh, most of people and most uh, things. Uh, so we wanted to do it faster, just to be Let's be over with, with it, and uh, that's it. And also, we wanted the new features and fixes. Nothing un unexpected. Uh, and then there is one more reason. Uh, we know that a lot of people are very eager to try Java 11. If that's going to make it, uh, make it more exciting for them to join us, uh, well, of course we're going to do it. That's, the, that's a, a very easy thing to do, and uh, yes. Now, why would you consider an upgrade to Java anything more modern than Java 8. Uh, this is uh, one of the primary reasons. Uh, does anybody know who, the, who that person is? Uh, of course, uh, this very friendly uh, person is JSON. And how is JSON related uh, to us? Well, JSON, well, anybody who does strings, or well, string manipulations, or anybody that uses REST, uh, which usually talk uh, uh, JSON, is going to be affected by uh, how string is capturing uh, its characters. You probably know that in up to Java 8 inclusive, uh, strings were uh, character array based, which means two bytes uh, per one entry into the table, and so on and so on. Memory cost is obvious. Uh, from Java 9 onwards, that was changed to a byte array. Uh, if you're using Default, uh, well, a smaller set of characters, for example, ASCII, which most of re REST responses that I am dealing with are, then you don't have to take two bytes per character, but you take just one, which means uh, you're going to save memory. If you're doing it with a lot of REST and a lot of JSON, you're going to save a lot of memory, which means less pressure on the GC, less pressure on uh, your CPU, and, uh, well, free performance, basically. Of course, somebody could say, yes, but you can do string deduplication with G1 on, on Java 8, and yes, that is correct. The problem with G1 on Java 8, it's, it's not that great, as in it's good, but it is much better in 11. Uh, so just by going from Java 8 upwards, you're going to get, well, happy JSON. Now, in our case, uh, upgrade, uh, and changing the Java version, so changing all the, all the applications, it was something that, that uh, engineers were uh, dealing with. Because uh, we have an ops team, that's not, a surpri that's not a surprise, but they deal with automation. They build the cookbooks that everybody else uses. So uh, we believe that uh, you build it, you run it, nobody's going to change the environment that your application is going to run uh, unless, you want to ch unless you want it to do something crazy like, I don't know, replace Kubernetes with whatever the new thing is going to be uh, out there, but that's not happening, luckily. Uh, but engineers take care of uh, the infrastructure tasks, and uh, if there is anything specialized uh, that needs to be done, uh, then this is where the, the ops people will step in. For this migration, our engineers, our software engineers, were able to migrate uh, almost the entire ecosystem to Java 11. The only uh, place where they had to talk to the ops people, as well, of course, give them a heads up, but also uh, ask them to change what uh, Team City defaults to. 
and that's it. Everything else done by software engineers, and it worked, and it worked nicely. Our context of uh, Java 11 upgrade was specifically from this build. If somebody has uh, archaeological inclinations, well, this is what I was able to dig, dig out. Uh, and we did it to all of our applications. Somebody could have asked, why did we not go to Java 9 or 10? As I said, because 9 and 10 are no longer maintained, the, I am not aware of anybody doing back, actively backporting uh, fixes uh, to those releases, so 11 was a better choice, and 12 wasn't available at the time, because we would have tried with 12, of course. And then we also had to make one more change. We decided not to use Oracle JDK anymore, so we went open JDK like most of you probably do. Uh, why? Uh, because there were licensing changes, uh, which means uh, you can't really build your own images and you cannot redistribute. Uh, this uh, in the context of Docker that you have seen, because we're building a Docker image which has the JVM version baked in, uh, means that we would be breaching the license, so OpenJDK doesn't come with those restrictions. And that was much easier. Also, uh, running Oracle JDK at that time in production required a license. Uh, What's changed in 17 is uh, the wording that I've uh, captured on the screenshot. This, uh, it says that it's free to re redistribute Oracle JDK if da, da 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 I am not going to tell you whether that's going to cover you. This is something that if uh, looks interesting and uh, you have a reason to come back to Oracle JDK out of Open JDK, then I would suggest you consult a lawyer who can read into legalese and uh, license uh, version of legalese. Uh, I am not a lawyer. I will not interpret it for you. I'm just going to tell you that there is, has been a, a license change, but I would probably suggest keep using Adopt, o Adopt Open JDK or just Open JDK and you'll be, th that also works. Now, Java, we've been beating the uh, release cadence uh, horse enough that I'm just going to show you this picture and I'm going to click through it. If anybody has questions or doesn't fully understand what Java release cadence is, let's talk outside or let's talk, uh, ask a question in the application. Uh, but there is a small interesting uh, comment from uh, Mark Reinhold on his blog about release cadence uh, going forward. Uh, the suggestion is hidden down there. That's this little, little uh, line underlined uh, in red. Uh, let's ship an LTS release every two years. It's a proposal, or it was a proposal at the moment of uh, me taking the screenshot, of, and I didn't investigate. But the cadence in which we have an LTS, so long-term uh, support release, uh, so one that uh, people will gravitate towards every th three years, seems to be uh, not often enough for the JDK team. Whether that actually comes through and uh, whether that's a good choice, I'm not going to say. Given that most of people are still 11 or in the process of going to 11, the fact that a version will be called LTS even more often and uh, they will be much more behind, uh, you can draw your own conclusions. But that's something to keep uh, an eye on. Now, if you're going to Java 11, or if you're doing a, a migration to a new Java version, you have uh, basically two, two, two options. You can compile and run on the new one, or you can compile on whatever you are compiling on and just run with the new one, so just replace the, the runtime uh, JVM. Both options are perfectly valid. Both options uh, are what you can do. I know plenty of people where, who were uh, adding most recent uh, JDK available, for example, to the Cassandra clusters, because that reduced uh, garbage collector jitter. And that was, that is possible, and that's something I will say, if, if that works for you, absolutely do it. Uh, any JDK release that comes out is, is a good uh, release, and it should not have bugs, because it's software. Uh, so option one, you can upgrade uh, the runtime and the, tool, and the tool chain. And you have option two, uh, which is uh, just use the recent Java, but the tool chain stays on the old stuff. Now, why would you consider uh, staying uh, with, with uh, an older tool chain? For example, if any of the things that you're running with is uh, old Cassandra, old, Gra old Grails, old Hadoop, old Kafka, old Spring Boot, and old, or old Thrift, or some, some other old stuff. Some of those products have been upgraded to support Java 11. The thing is, if your organization still has some uh, older integrations, older pieces in your software, you might not be able to. And that's normal, and that's uh, absolutely fine. Uh, some of them were actually uh, even not run with uh, Java 
11, uh, you will have to do your research. The more dependencies you have, the more esoteric dependencies you have, the more research uh, you will need to do. It's a matter of going uh, through release notes and uh, talking to vendors or just sometimes trying to run uh, things because even, they, even though some of them might say that something doesn't run with 11, it will run perfectly. And then some people might say that something runs with 11 or runs with 17 even, and then you just try to do it and then you have those bugs and they do happen and that's normal. Uh, First, consult the notes so that you know what kind of an effort you will be dealing with. Or maybe, because you're here in a Java upgrade talk, uh, you can use it as a vector to suggest to, for example, the people who maintain your Cassandra clusters, hey, maybe it's time for an upgrade because this uh, three line is a bit dated. Maybe we can go something more modern. Uh, if you think that uh, people don't run old Cassandra, well, they still do. Uh, same for old uh, Hadoop clusters. There is plenty of legacy out there for us to fix and to upgrade. Now, build tools. If you are going to deal with a Java upgrade, there are two tools that are included in the JDK itself under the bin directory uh, that I want to mention. One is called JDEPS, which shows module dependencies, uh, including internal API usage. Uh, and also, this awesome tool is uh, available as a Gradle or Maven plugin. Uh, dear Ant users, maybe there is something for Ant. I just don't use Ant, so I don't include it because this presentation is in context. Uh, in Revolut, we use uh, Gradle to build almost all of, all of our applications. Maven is there for some, side, some, some personal side projects. Uh, so I mentioned that also a lot of people use, use Maven. I don't know too many people who use Ant. If you're here, wave. If you're uh, online, uh, you can indicate your, pre uh, your presence. It will be an interesting discovery for me. There is also JDepper Scan. JDepper Scan is uh, a tool that scans for usage of deprecated APIs. And that, since, well, past Java 8 has become, uh, is, is more and more and more relevant to us because uh, Oracle started to deprecate a lot of APIs. Oracle, Oracle also started to remove a lot of deprecated APIs. Uh, you might uh, have noticed some APIs that actually have disappeared from the, from the GEK. And this trend is only going to continue. If you want to scan preemptively, potentially, for, for a migration, you can actually uh, use this and have a build and uh, just generate a report, one of, uh, for what is your software going to look. Are you using the illegal APIs or the things that are going to be removed? Uh, or maybe some of your dependencies, are, or maybe you have a corporate framework that does it, or maybe something else. Uh, it's there. It's built in. It's a need that's been recognized. It's uh, available within uh, the JDK. Gradle and Maven plugin continue. Also, speaking of Maven, how do you get Maven to run uh, Java 11? Easy. Uh, get a recent compiler plugin as in 3.8.0 already was good enough, and that's an old screenshot to anybody who's current with Maven. But since I mentioned this, there are two very useful things uh, that Maven users uh, can do when it comes to upgrades. Both come uh, courtesy of the versions plugin. One is called Display plugin updates, which surprise display plugin displays plugin updates. So you don't have to go to repositories. You don't don't have to go to search Maven org or uh, just just Google the internet for ran, random Maven plugins and see okay what is the latest release? Have they released anything? No, there is a built-in uh, tool within Maven that will give you a report that you can upgrade this. And if you actually specify that you require at least Maven 204, which I don't think anybody still uses, but probably the world can surprise me, you can actually upgrade to, to those versions. And it will give you this very detailed uh, report of how far you can upgrade depending on your Maven version. If you want to specify a Maven version, there is a prerequisites block in, the, in your POMS. And also, versions plugin comes with uh, display dependency updates, which uh, does what it suggests, is displays updates of dependencies. If you are seeing bugs, or if you're seeing, uh, if you want to see how much behind uh, the, the state of the art or the latest bleeding edge uh, you are, you can just run it and see what happens. And it will tell you, hey, you can upgrade this, this, and that, and that, and that. It does not understand release notes. It does not understand uh, bug reports. But it will at least tell you how many numerical versions uh, you are behind. And if you want to replace something, well, you can, do, you can copy paste, or you can ask the versions plugin to do it for you. Now, Gradle users. Java upgrade, going to 11, or maybe further. To 11, it's easy. If you're on Gradle v5, or v6, or v7, you're covered. You don't have to worry about that. If you're using Gradle v4 or earlier, you will have to upgrade. That's, uh, that's that. Now, if you want to upgrade 
Gradle version, my recommendation is upgrade one version at a time. Upgrading multiple major Gradle versions at a time is just more difficult. And I like simplicity. I'm lazy, especially in the morning. And what about Gradle and Java 17? Up until some time ago, uh, Gradle 7.3 RC1 was delayed. Uh, luckily, that, that is an outdated screenshot because uh, Gradle 7.3 RC1 that supports Java 17 uh, has been released uh, on the 12th of October. That's three weeks ago. But Java 17 came out, uh, what, 14th of September. So that's also quite, quite fresh and new. Uh, what it means, if you're, if, you're, if you're a Gradle user, you, will have, you can upgrade to 7.3 RC1. Maybe there is an RC2 already. Uh, or wait for 7.3 full release, and uh, that works with Java 17. You might have mixed experience with uh, an older Gradle version and 17. I know people who reported being successful with it, uh, though it's officially not supported. So that's all I'm going to say here. Mokito. Uh, or any other dependency. One thing that you will notice is that uh, formal JDK support will come in a version, and then there is going to be a litany of versions that mention uh, fixes related or bug fixes related to supporting this JDK version. Why do I mention Mokito? Because a, a lot of people uses that, uh, use that, plus that uh, uses reflection, plus uh, they couldn't. Uh, it's, it, Upgrade to JDK 11 for a library like that is not a one-off thing. It's new, not you just upgrade to 11 and you're done. No. Uh, bug fixes and uh, changes will happen, and it will continue. So keep upgrading. This is where the versions plugins uh, reports come in handy. Similarly, Juke, an awesome, awesome framework for dealing with your database. Uh, we recommend it highly. We, we love it because we love being predictable when, when it comes to Persistence performance, and uh, if somebody is anybody unfamiliar with Joke here? No, I don't see. Yeah, actually, there are people who, who, who do. Uh, if you want to check out Java Upgrade, obviously you know where to look, but if you have never checked out Juke, do, t do check it out. It's a different way of integrating with relational database. Uh, for us, in context of Revolut, what we frequently see is uh, our services will be enjoying a launch a limited uh, audience, a limited number of users, and then we will launch them, for example, in the continental Europe. What ensues is a rapid spike in, in usage, and what we then want to have is a predictable performance when it comes to our uh, Postgres instances, obviously. Uh, Juke is awesome because it's, uh, you, you reason, uh, you think in SQL. Uh, it sounds awkward to people who are used to Hibernate, but it's actually a very powerful thing because if you need to change anything, it's easy. You just change it like you would with SQL. And Juke supports uh, Java 17, we including records since uh, version 3.15.0, which is uh, some features are commercial, but yeah, it should work. Another thing that I will mention is Flyway, one of the tools for managing migrations uh, of your database. Especially if you use it with test containers, makes isolated and repeatable tests reasonably easy. Uh, now, Flyway had a funny story. They, start, they started supporting JDK 11 in version 5.2, uh, we've encountered some issues on that version. We actually rolled back to 4.2.0, and we were perfectly happy. And then we upgraded and caught up with uh, 5.2.4, uh, because that was the release that had no uh, problems. Also, I mentioned deprecation. I mentioned removals. Uh, one of the poster removal, uh, past 8, is Jaxby no longer being shipped as part of your JDK, which means if you want JAXB to be uh, available for your application, you actually have to ac include it as a dependency. Uh, that's just that. Nothing uh, scary, nothing uh, unexpected, but it used to be there. It used to be in the JDK. It got removed. So things in the JDK get removed regularly, and we'll, come, uh, we'll go for a list of things that uh, suffered this later on. Now, languages. We use Groovy for Spock only. Uh, we had to wait for Groovy to fully run with 11 before we were able to go full 11. Uh, then it worked. But if you're using Spock, and if you're stuck with an older version of Spock, this might be a point of contention or a point of 
work slash re rework because uh, Groovy has its uh, peculiarities. As then you have to, the, the, the syntax and the power that it gives you sometimes means that you have to wait a bit for it to support newer Java. Luckily, 11 is already supported, 17. Groovy 4.0 is in beta 1. Uh, or was at the time of checking, maybe there is a newer one. And uh, then it should just work. Scala, we just switched JDK versions, everything works. They didn't uh, care about modules uh, at all, but the rest of the stuff worked. And funny thing about Scala, they already mentioned J JDK 18 readiness. This is probably the only language that I know that upfront mentions 18 readiness, uh, but they already are. If you're using uh, one of those recent enough Scala versions, you're, you're covered, and that's it. Kotlin. Kotlin uh, and uh, our JDK 11 upgrade was very simple. As soon as they had a version that supported JDK 11, we just upgraded, and it just worked. So uh, I can rec recommend the experience. The problem is I couldn't see uh, anything about the, the JDK support, uh, JDK, JDK 17 support yet. It will probably happen, but for us, and we are using Kotlin uh, a bit, uh, that's going to hurt, or we have to wait. And same for our Android stuff. Obviously, if you're using Android, there is a high probability that you're using some Kotlin. Uh, we have to wait to update everything. Now, dependencies. What might your typical application uh, in Java look like? Well, you have something that depends on something that depends on something. As in, obviously, those dependency chains are going to be much, much longer and much more complex. But when it comes to Revolut apps, there is uh, usually a, a framework, a library called Alpha that supports integrating with, with Postgres and Event Store. And there is a commons library. And uh, that's basically it. And we try to keep our dependencies uh, reasonably thin. Uh, how did we approach the migration? We started to compile the apps with uh, Java version 11, so didn't touch the, the, the central frameworks uh, yet, because we, want, we needed to make some source changes so that uh, the compiler would be happy. That wasn't too painful, but this is what we did. And then we started to run the tests using 11 to discover what breaks in unit and integration tests. And we are very proud of our testing, and we like the amount of tests that we have. Uh, but we discovered some uh, funny quirks of uh, Spock when the migration had to happen. And then we started to run individual applications using 11. The central libraries were still compiled using 8, like, it, like they used to be do like they used to before. And then we uh, put focus on on the framework, so into the onion. So you can call it the Shrek approach or you can call it the, the onion approach doesn't really matter. Uh, I would recommend uh, going from the outside because uh, then th that's what we did, and that worked reasonably well. If you go from the inside and target a newer JDK, you risk uh, using some of the newer API features, uh, especially with some of the syntax sugar that comes with 17. That's a real risk because, uh, yeah, it's very convenient. If anybody's using JDK 8 and Bouncy Castle, there was a change. Uh, if you want the, the details, they are in the slide. If you want the slides, email me. I'm not going to talk about it too much, just highlighting this. And then VM options. VM options, uh, especially when going from 8 to 9, uh, had this change. They had unified GC logging. Unified GC logging means that instead of using the top level incantation, you start using the bottom level incantation, which means uh, you change how you asked your GC to produce logs. And producing logs from GC is generally a very useful thing. Uh, very useful thing. The question that you could then ask, OK, how do I even tra keep track of that? Well, there is an awesome creation of uh, Chris Who Codes, uh, which is in the form of a website, which tracks the flags of a lot of the JDK releases out there. As in, uh, they, uh, they cover Belsoft, they cover Eclipse, they cover Oracle, they cover SAP, OpenJ9, Microsoft, GraalVM, and so on. I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, there is no point in you learning and actively uh, grabbing through sources of the JDK that you are running with through for the list of flags that's changed and to try to infer the meaning of the flags in the source code, at least in most, most common cases. Sometimes there is. Uh, if you're curious about what are the interactions 
between certain flags, what is the meaning of, of the flags, go to this website. It is a, a very useful thing. It is a great repository of this knowledge, and it will tell you about uh, what's affecting what, how they are inter intertwined. And they also mention or link to this tool, and you can see it in the top left corner in tiny, tiny thing, Jacoline. Jacoline is uh, a Java command line inspector. So if you're trying to use nonsensical flags or you would like some tool to verify it, you can use, the, you can use Jacoline, and it will tell you, hey, you're using uh, a command line that makes sense or using a command line that actually doesn't make sense anymore because for the version of the JDK that you have selected on the operating system and the CPU, something makes no sense. And that's useful. Java 9 uh, changed how, they, how you configure zip files as and they don't mmap anymore. Uh, just mentioning. Now, time precision was a bigger thing, and it is a bigger thing. Why? Because uh, starting from JDK 9, Onwards, uh, Java, instead of only being able to do top left, they started being able to do bottom right. Or, in another word, uh, they increased the precision of the clock system UTC clock. Depending on what the underlying uh, operating system can give you, uh, Java will now see, uh, the, well, give you the precision uh, as much as, 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 as the operating system can. Uh, which is mentioned here, which is uh, mentioned here, so captured in Joda and Java time, uh, which to us engineers usually manifests as the number of digits after the dot in your time. If anybody's uh, doing tests that involve databases and precision of storing records and expect some things to be within a certain range, you will, you will see a change of the representation and that's expected. If you have some ac approximating logic that touches times, you will see changes and uh, some tests will break because of that. And that's basically uh, the meaning of that change to you as engineers. Uh, also, what uh, the conclusion is, if you want something that has controllable precision, because sometimes you do, sometimes it's just easier to have tests running with the same number of uh, digits, or your environments have a standard that you want to uh, maintain, uh, the recommendation is have your own time injection logic so that you can affect all of the tests through a single uh, single call. Uh, we have something that's called clock also or time provider. And uh, instead of saying now from uh, the Java time APIs, we say uh, instance and that works. Uh, the code change is trivial. The significance is not so much. Now, Java 11 upgrades. I mentioned that we've had some bugs. If you want the details, they are listed on the slides. Data formatter with Locala UK through a null, point, null pointer exception. Happens. Uh, you can work around. And there were compiler bugs. Things stopped to compile, especially with this uh, great esoteric uh, message, uh, compiler misc, MSG bug arguments, 11.03, Yeah, great. Uh, that was actually a duplicate of something. Uh, what it meant to us is we had to be very peculiar about which build of JDK 11 we were using. Uh, this bug manifested on one point release and then didn't manifest on another, or it manifested on OpenJDK and didn't manifest on Zulu uh, OpenJDK. Uh, it was awkward to uh, observe, but it wasn't a blocker. There were also changes in generics, which means you started getting uh, null pointer exceptions when you're trying to uh, do inference. Unexpected, but happens. Well, no, nobody fully understands generics. Uh, type inference, uh, Java C was incorrectly applying capture. We changed and we moved on. Apart from that, no other significant errors that we remember. The significant change with Java 11, though, was uh, G1 was the default garbage collector. And G1, uh, in short, is, uh, is awesome. We have no problems with it, and I will say do it. First note of warning, J G1 with, uh, that ships with JDK 11 is a completely different G1 than the one that JDK 8 ships. So if you are trying JDK 8 and using G1 and you're saying that it's not that great, the one in, J uh, in JDK 11 is better. Uh, and the one in JDK 17 is even better than the one in 11. Now, in 11, full GCs are multi-threaded. 
That was not the case for JDK8. So if you're JDK8 and you're using G1 for some reason and you see a single thread usage of uh, your garbage collector, then that's, that's the thing. It's the, the, just the feature wasn't there. Uh, our services require human perception level, poseless levels. So we, don't, uh, we are not running a high frequency or ultra high frequency environment. We don't need to go as far as uh, some of you might. Uh, at least that's, that's the situation for now. Uh, what our experience was, uh, we kept increasing the heap sizes and we observed no issues. Uh, no issues as in no significant pauses, no, no crazy jitter, and uh, we were reasonably happy. As in most of our applications just didn't really uh, notice uh, G1 coming in. As in garbage collector graphs kept looking like that, no, no major change, and we were happy. Except for this. Applications running with G1, on 11, started to, out of memory, uh, faster than other applications. And this is especially uh, problematic and troublesome if you know that there is this uh, exception called out of memory error, GC overhead limit exceeded. Luckily, we didn't get this one. We, just get, we were just getting plain old normal crashes. Uh, bottom line, memory appetite of JDK 11 applications was slightly higher than uh, JDK 8. Uh, and somebody could say, hey, maybe that's because we're using the, operating, the wrong operating system. No, let's, well, a live deploy to Oracle Cloud, a sample application, and uh, behold, uh, same heap uh, uses JDK 8 at the bottom. Uh, RSS there is smaller, significantly smaller. Uh, this is what uh, also we expected, but Conclusion is RSS of a Java 11 process will be higher than that of 11 because G1 has to initialize all of the memory regions that it has. For a fixed container size uh, and fixed XMX and XMS, we would see increased memory appetite, which means we had to adjust slightly by a few percentage points. And that was it. In general, if there was an out of memory error that would eventually happen with JDK 8, we would observe it much faster uh, with 11. And we like that because fail fast is a, a useful thing to do. But I did mention that this is all in context. Uh, so well, for us, uh, that's all uh, in a few YAML files and we just adjusted and, and uh, redeployed and moved on. Language features adoption. Uh, JDK 11 shipped with a lot of new language features, specifically var. Uh, a random project over a year, people just started to use it. Uh, this graph is not, as in giving you numbers here doesn't, would not mean anything. The, the thing is VAR really caught on. Uh, people who have coded with other languages, especially, well, Scala users, they are, they keep trying to type VAL and it keeps being rejected by the compiler, uh, myself included. Uh, but still, we do use VAR a lot because it's just less typing and, and, and we, we turned out to, to like it that much and it went into our official Java guidelines as in, yeah, use VAR as much as you, as you want and as much as possible if it's clear what the effect of that is. Another change that happened in 9 is that single underscore became uh, a keyword uh, and cannot be used as, as an identifier. So if you were, uh, using it, you might get this kind of uh, compiler errors, which is very trivial to go forward with. Uh, if anybody cannot notice that, that's a double underscore. Serves exactly the same purpose. Works fine. So yeah, a tiny workaround. Uh, also, with JDK 11, uh, you can use Java Flight Recorder and you can use Mission Control, which are free and open source, even to use in production. And they are available at this particular GitHub uh, address. Uh, if you've never tried Java Flight Recorder, I do recommend you give it a try. It's a very, very powerful tool, especially uh, if you look at what is made available JDK 14 onwards, which is Java Flight Recorder even streaming. You can live connect to an application and stream events into your flight recorder and just observe the application as it runs, and then disconnect and monitor production as you please. Uh, Awesome feature, a killer feature uh, if you have a sizable production environment. And then the question becomes, well, I told you our Java 11 story. As you see, it wasn't that painful. As in the, it, there, were, there were no dragons. Uh, the question is, what is next? Obviously, uh, this is what's, uh, what's next to us. And this is actually uh, something that we already started working on. We expect to be migrated to Java 17, I will say soon, 
Uh, if all goes well uh, before the end of the year, but well, that, that kind of time frame, maybe, well, maybe slightly after that. Uh, obviously, this is uh, completely transparent to our users, but we really want uh, what's coming in, uh, especially when it comes to well, performance uh, fixes and uh, language enhancements. And let's have a look at that. So what happens that makes it exciting for us in JTK 12? Nothing. That's a completely, uh, that's a JTK release that we're not going to uh, use too much. Just because, uh, yeah, we are not going to run Shenandoah, we are not going to, uh, CDS is not a factor for us. But you can see G1 fixes. So this is why, why I keep on uh, saying that G1 in different JDK release is different. Because G1, as a garbage collector, the, the general algorithm remains similar, but it, is being, uh, it keeps being developed. Uh, JDK 13 uh, comes with ZGC. Uh, which has a, that's a nice feature that we, we've used and some previews. Uh, no longer a factor for us because we're no longer maintained quite old. Uh, Java 14, I mentioned Java Flight Recorder event, stream, uh, event streaming, an awesome feature. Uh, we want to have it available as quickly as possible. This is one of the drivers for migration. We actually were considering moving to 14. Uh, but some real things happened and uh, that prevented us going there. Uh, and then 14 has also another very useful uh, feature, which is helpful null pointer exceptions. Helpful null pointer exceptions gives you basically this. It says cannot invoke name of the method because some value is null. And that's a feature that's off by default in JDK 14. But if you look at 17, it's on by default, or at least it was on. Uh, on the JDK 17, I, I downloaded it, so I expect it will be uh, with all of them. Uh, if you have null pointers in your production logs, even if you, if you see a lambda or something uh, convoluted, uh, getting more insight about what happened is useful. It's just tremendously useful and tremendously nice uh, change that uh, has been introduced in that JDK. On the other hand, JDK 14 <laughs> removes uh, CMS. If you're using CMS, if you rely on CMS, uh, 14 is a very problematic release because it gets rid of it. And that's that. It also removes the pack 200 tools and API, but I don't know too many people who would use it, but still. Uh, uh, for us, that's not a factor because we're not using that. We're using G1 and we're reasonably happy. If you are using uh, CMS, uh, your mileage might vary or those applications that actually rely on CMS and garbage collector flags might have to wait or you might want to have a look at uh, ZGC. Uh, JDK 15, another uh, thing that they remove is uh, the Nashorn JavaScript engine. For us, not a factor. For you, if you're using it, it might be. Uh, also inc includes uh, ZGC, so what Oracle claims is the new killer amazing uh, garbage collector. Uh, I have not tried it in anger, and I will not offer any opinions about that. There are talks available about ZGC. There are very, very amazing people working on ZGC. It's probably uh, very good. I just haven't used it, so I will not give you a report. Uh, JDK 15 also comes with text blocks, so it's finally possible to do that in Java without using Groovy. Uh, what is not that uh, fully empowering is that you cannot do uh, variable interpolation in there, so you cannot uh, put an, I don't know, curly braces S and have uh, a variable being rendered there, but that's progress. The fact that we can do multi-line strings is uh, very, very useful. JDK 16 migrated to GitHub. For us, not a factor, but useful if you want to uh, contribute. Uh, also includes pattern matching of for instance of, so language syntax sugar, but very nice one. And also includes records. Records is uh, the feature that is going to make uh, probably the most changes to how we write Java in the next few years. Uh, because what is, what is a record? It's a class called Java Lang record that changes the left side to the right side. They are almost equivalent, except I didn't bother to write accessors for those, uh, for those fields. Uh, records uh, is a feature in which compiler will generate a constructor, it will generate the equals, it will generate a hash code, and accessors for every single field that you have in your, in your record. Uh, the fields uh, will have accessors, which are called exactly like the, the fields are called, so first and last. And here you can see the listing of uh, 
what's present there in the bytecode. Uh, there is one caveat. Many libraries are not 16 plus ready in, in the sense of supporting records. If you are using uh, some of binding libraries, uh, they will not expect records, or they will expect uh, your accessors to be called get. And obviously, with records, there are no setters. Uh, for get, uh, there is a simple workaround. Either add your own custom uh, accessor, or call your properties get something rather than something. But that kind of is ugly, as in it's terribly ugly and terrible, and we don't want to do it. But it's only a fair, uh, fair thing. I have to say that, because as of now, it is, we, we are where we are. And also, 16's, uh, 16 starts to do this, strongly encapsulate JDK internals by default. Uh, the significance to you, the users, is very simple. You have to add a flag, and everything works as expected. Uh, and no changes uh, are needed. But JDK 17 also inclu includes strongly encapsulate JDK internals. But this time, you have to do this. Uh, and if you, if you are actively using internal illegal APIs within your JDK, this is one of the reasons why I will say maybe go to 16, let your library and uh, dependency authors upgrade to 17 compatibility so they stop using the legal APIs. And it also contains sealed classes, which is going to be quite nice for API designers and context-specific uh, deserialization filters, but I'm not going to go through them because we're almost running out of time. So if you have questions, uh, now is the time to enter them into the application unless you have done it before, and we'll soon be going through that. And if you want the slides, just email me. I'll send you the slides. No secrets to it. Uh, and yeah, there's always the question of how should we upgrade? How do I recommend people upgrade? Go 8 to 11, try 17. If it works, you win. If it doesn't, go to 16 and then go to 17. And then let me have a look. Q&A. I see emptiness. Or my iPad is out of Wi-Fi, one of the two. Uh, but I have, a work, I have a workaround for this. A question that might come in is how do you get the colors? Use semantic highlighting in the... In, uh, your IntelliJ, plus you might want to use rainbow brackets. Uh, somebody is going to ask this eventually, maybe in the corridor. Uh, how did we find JDK uh, 11 performance? Very, uh, very good. We had no problems. Uh, as I mentioned, our services are, are supposed to return in uh, two-digit milliseconds, uh, or sometimes uh, they might actually have a budget of uh, three-digit milliseconds. Everything works. Everything is within budget. We don't have. We didn't encounter any JDK-related performance regressions. If we have a perf any any performance uh, hiccups, this is because uh, of uh, the code that's being run, uh, not because of the JDK uh, changes. Are we using modules? And did we think about migrating to modules? No, still not. Uh, and frankly, we're not going to. Uh, we, our services are deployed independently. They talk through uh, their service API. That gives us enough modularization, and we're reasonably happy with it. And uh, the common APIs, we, we put in a jar, as, and we ex expose that, uh, those interfaces as APIs. And uh, this, so far, has been enough. So no plans and no insight into modules that you're going to get here. <sighs> Yeah, and in the Q&A, I see a comment from Stefan about not yet, but we'll add it in the near future. I don't think that's relevant, so I think there is something wrong with the app. Maybe the, somebody can help me and if, there, if they see anything more. But I see he heads no, showing that no. Somebody could ask, did we see any benefits from the byte array in strings? Yes, that was a few percentage points of uh, reduced memory consumption, but that was very quickly cannibalized or taken over by the traffic that our services uh, are enjoying, which is good and expected. It's not going to be a massive change, but it is uh, significant, as, as in a couple percentage points, repeatedly uh, over heaps of up to 30 gigs, over the number of runtimes that you might have. It's definitely a game we're fighting for, especially if you pay for those gigabytes. Uh, which JDK are we using? Uh, Open JDK, uh, that's quite accurate uh, as of now. If you want some resources, well, here are the links. And obviously, I'll finish with that slide. Thank you. <laughs>